Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you all for inviting me to be here. I have to hold this because fashion for women doesn't do um, pockets, which I think should be the next subject of your debate. <laughs> <laughs> um, sort of looking around to see how many people are wearing poppies and hoping that you're not going to be scowling at me. If you're going to scowl, just sort of look away. Um, okay, I don't want you to think that um, the cornerstone of my proposition is uh, Twitter and BuzzFeed, but I do want to tell you that the um, BuzzFeed UK editor posted um, on Twitter something that said, Poppy Outrage is my favorite British holiday. I hope it never ends. He was, of course, responding to the ubiquitous policing of poppy wearing, which, like the Christmas countdown, seems to start earlier and get more insistent every year. Um, We've already referred to how just days ago we had the sight of our Prime Minister, David Cameron, wearing a photoshopped poppy because that's how crazy the level of judgment and hypocrisy over this issue has become. Seriously, it's really embarrassing now. It's become a joke. Remembrance? It's ridiculous. Red Poppy Enforcers, please, I urge you to stop. You're making us all look ridiculous. Red poppy pushing fervor runs so high these days that public figures, uh, politicians, TV presenters, celebrities and footballers ca caught not wearing the poppy are harassed and decried as treacherous, unpatriotic, somehow disrespectful to the fallen um, and somehow anti-British. Of course the red poppy is a glorification of war. It's something that I will discuss in a minute. I also want it to be clear that when someone argues from a position that their position is value neutral, their very nationalistic, militaristic position is value neutral, whereas opponents to it are politicizing it, I trust that you're all gonna see straight through that. Um, as was also referred to earlier, it's got to the point where 47% of the population want wearing poppies to be compulsory. Compulsory, what does that mean? Does that mean we'll be sent to jail if we don't? Will there be a fine? Will we be tied up in stocks and had tomatoes thrown at us? It's become so bombastic that Channel 4 newsreader Jon Snow called it poppy fascism, uh, presumably hoping that the poppy enforcers would see the terrible irony in that, but hey, they didn't. And of course, the problem with poppy wearing is this illiberal enforcement, this compulsion to make everybody wear it, to make everybody have a one-note definition of what respect is which in the end comes over as actually very disrespectful. Um, so we had footballer James McLean, uh, who's from Derry in Northern Ireland, saying that he would not wear a poppy on uh, Remembrance Day and he received death threats uh, for refusing to wear it in the past. And then the actor Sienna Miller, who a few days ago was on the Graham Norton show, wasn't wearing one, got called, quote, a disrespectful cow and shameful. Was that done on the behalf of the fallen? Was that done on behalf of the 4.8 million military veterans currently in the UK? And of course, a massive problem with the poppy wearing is the binding of honoring people, which obviously we do, with sanitizing and glorifying war. It's no great secret that the Great War, World War I, was a senseless, senseless war. It didn't end all wars. It wasn't a just war. It was a nightmarish bloodbath carried out by imperial interests competing over territory and resources. Point of information. Yes. Um, the honorable member suggests that Britain in 1914 had no casus belli, no case of war against Germany. But is it not true? Uh, 
Ah, yes, the plucky little Belgium line. Um, I think Germany at that point quite legitimately asked by what right Britain was colonizing the parts of the empire that it did, and really the only right was force, which hopefully addresses that question. Unlike the Second World War, this one had nothing to do with fighting fascism or defending democracy. It was a war fought by elites using the blood of their own citizens, sending 16 million men to foretold and entirely avoidable deaths. To glorify that war in the way that we commemorate it with the red poppy is ultimately to add insult to the already terrible suffering and loss of life. We can honor those who served without honoring the politics that sent them to serve. We can commemorate the dead, but not the wars. And it's the fusing of these two disparate things that is so wrong with the red poppy pushing movement. Commemoration can't be prescriptive or coercive because then it becomes meaningless. It takes many forms. It could be wearing a red poppy, it could be wearing a white poppy, it could be wearing no poppy. The white poppy movement dates back to 1933, which suggests that the current poppy mania isn't so much intended as a remembrance as a determination to impose a particular reading of history. In terms of glorifying war, I would like to refer you to a letter written to The Guardian in uh, 2010 by war veterans. I'm just going to read you a section from it. They argued that the aim of the commemoration of the war dead was in danger of being submerged by political aims, albeit value-neutral political aims. They wrote, a day that should be about peace and remembrance is turned into a month-long drum roll of support for current wars. This year's campaign has been launched with showbiz hype. The true horror and futility of war is forgotten and ignored. More glorification. Last year, our Prime Minister David Cameron, defending the centenary uh, year poppy installation that was at the Tower of London, said that it was a reminder of, quote, how many people gave their lives, not just in that conflict, although obviously the slaughter was horrendous, but also in so many conflicts since then, where our armed services have been defending our freedoms and our way of life. Please show me how that is not glorification. That's the red poppy wearing logic at its core. The idea, yes. Excuse me? Is this not an argument against the way people perceive the poppy and not what the poppy should be itself? But if the poppy has become that, then it becomes one and the same thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, perhaps we'll reach that stage in the future. Who knows? Um, <laughs> the idea that up to one million Iraqis' lives were lost uh, and so many more ruined in the 2003 war, the country hollowed out and decimated for the sake of our freedoms. Um, the idea of showing support for that and for an endless agenda of end endless war, is that the only way to avoid accusations of not honoring the dead? Of all the things we can honor them for, is that the way it has to be? And of course, a big part of this is the us and them logic of the post 9-11 period and the endless war on terror in the post 9-11 binary of us against them. The poppy shows you are one of us. It's a jingoistic, narrowly defined loyalty test but it belies an insecurity about British identity that we just don't feel. A fragile self-definition that craves affirmation through unthinking, predefined, uniform mass gestures. That's just not us. What does it mean anyway to honor the fallen, to honor the sacrifices that they made for us? If it's about respecting bravery, let's do that by having the courage to stand up to an imposed politically motivated conformity. If it's about respect for lives brutally cut short, let's show that by living our lives honestly and with dignity and with integrity. 
If it's about respecting the fact that they didn't have a choice, let's respect that by defending our do robust diversity and our tolerance of difference. Wear a poppy. Don't wear a poppy. It's up to you. But part of the commemoration of the falling has to be, do you know what? We are robust. We can value difference. We can have a debate. Thank you.